Spiders and Spider Ants. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. I am so delighted to show you one of the latest pieces that I've come up with. This is the Mobius Virus Wrap or shawl or whatever you want to call it. I would say it's sort of a wrap, if you will. Absolutely love how this came out. And let me tell you, it took a lot of tweaking and fiddling and finagling, but we incorporated one of my favorite stitches, the virus stitch, with a really fun and funky design. Absolutely love it. It's not as difficult as you might think. Technically, it's only a four row repeat. Mm -hmm. Yep. And once you get started, it moves along pretty darn quick. Now, this is actually my third attempt at this particular project. The first attempt, it was too small. The third attempt, sorry, the, the first attempt was too small. The second attempt was too big. And this, my third attempt, I think is just right. It was sort of a Goldilocks kind of scenario. Um, but I am delighted. Now, this particular piece was made with Red Heart Ombre in the lovely violet colorway. And I used, I went into the second skein of the yarn and I am absolutely delighted with the results. Um, and as you can see, the back looks lovely. Now, the first attempt, a little bit different. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. Alrighty, so this was actually my first attempt. Same yarn, different colorway, and it's a little bit smaller, right? And so I had used fewer multiples. Now the multiple of the particular stitch that we have in question, the virus stitch, it's a multiple of 19 stitches. Now this one I used, it was nine multiples of 19. So I ended up with 171 chains for this particular piece. And as you can see, it's more of a big cowl or a shrug, if you will. Whereas the purple one, I would say is more of an encompassing wrap. It comes down further along the arms and it's a little less constrictive. However, if this is the size that you're going for, 171 chains worked out just fine with this. Now, the other thing, about this particular piece is if you notice, now this is, see this chain right here? This is actually the starting chain of this entire piece. It works from the center out in a twisted Mobius loop. And seeing as how this was my first attempt, I'm not disappointed, but I thought it needs some tweaking because this chain was really distracting me. It was driving me crazy. So with my second attempt, which I'm about to show you, um, I managed to get rid of the chain, but it was way too big. So let me show you that one. All right, folks, this was my second attempt. <laughs> Again, same stitch, same yarn, different colorway, and of course, a different number of chains. So the anemone, the, the rose colored one, that was 171 chains. This one is 247 chains, okay? Big difference, as you can see. It's very drapey, it's very billowy, and it's lovely if this is the look that you're going for. I mean, this is almost sort of like wearing a twisted blanket or a, a poncho, if you will. Now, let me do the turn. I mean, it has its merits. It is really cool. It's funky, you know, and I do like it, but I thought it was too big. So again, the first one, it was 171 chains. This one is 247 chains. So the difference is nine multiples versus 13 multiples. And that's why I decided, let me go with perhaps 11 multiples. That is the purple one, which, you know what, let's just throw that one on right now. And so, yeah, it took, oh, before I go any further, as you can see, right here, this is where that chain would be 
I managed to eliminate that. Mm -hmm. Yes, so it's no longer a distraction. And also this was in the spearmint colorway. And so that green one, that was, as I said, that was 247 chains. This one is only 209 chains and it works perfectly. That is to say, it works perfectly for my particular frame and bust size, if you will. Now, that being said, you may need to make some adjustments. Um, I mean, this is me using a size J, six millimeter hook, and a worsted weight yarn to achieve this, and it fits me. Now, you may need to use more or few multiples of 19 in order to get the size that you're going for. There is a little bit of trial and error, but as you can see, the results are so worth the work, and I love how this looks. So, without further ado, let's get started. Hello again. Alrighty, so for a quick recap, I used about two, you know, I want to say like one and a half to two skeins of the Red Heart Super Saver Ombre in order to make the purple as well as the green. I only needed one skein for the anemone, the small one uh, that I had made. So you're going to need, I would say, approximately anywhere from 400 to 800 yards of yarn if you're using a worsted weight yarn. Now, this video is not sponsored, but I always like to let you know what it is that I use in case if you want to duplicate the results. Um, and so we are going to take today going to be using the anemone colorway again. Um, and of course, by all means, you can use whatever yarn, whatever yarn weight, whatever hook you want, provided that the hook corresponds with the yarn weight. That being said, if you're using a different thickness of yarn, you are going to need more or fewer multiples than I'm talking about here. Now, again, quick recap. Okay, so the small one, it was nine multiples of 19, so that's 171 chains. The purple one, the one that fit me oh so nicely, I think, that was 11 multiples of 19. So that was 209 chains. Now the biggie biggie, that was 13 multiples of 19. So that was 247 chains. So offhand, okay, you know, if you want a rough guesstimation, I would say anywhere between 9 and 13 multiples of 19 should fit, you know, a, you know, an adult sized person, um, give or take, but somewhere in this range, you may need to do some tweaking. Uh, you might find that 10 multiples might suit your fancy more or 12. You may need to play around a bit, but this gives you a good framework. Now for today's piece, we're going to be doing three multiples of 19 because I think it would make a good swatch. So I'm going to be doing 57 chains, which I already have laid out. Now, before going into your finished piece, I would suggest do a swatch first. Get used to how the, you know, the, the mechanics of not just doing the stitch, but in a Mobius works before going into your finished piece. That's a suggestion. Take it for what you will. Um, so, you know, like I said, I'm going to be doing 57 chains. And again, I'm using a six, six millimeter. Okay, my focus is freaking out. A six millimeter J crochet hook. And when you have your multiples of 19 ready, let's get started. All right, round one. Now, before we start, I do want to apologize for such a long series of intro bits there, but I like to be thorough because inevitably I will get asked a certain question that I would like to cover before we get started. So I have my 57, yes, my 57 chains. Now, ordinarily when working in the round, you're always instructed, don't 
twist your chain. Well, today, that is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to put one full twist in the chain. So I'm going to go down the length of our chain, not twisting yet. Okay, so that is the end of our chain. So I'm going to have it facing our hook, and then we're going to give it one full twist. So right now it is the right side facing up. Give it one full twist. So it's facing up again. Now we're going to go into that chain. Underneath both loops of that V. And do a single crochet right into that first chain. Okay, now if you don't have the twist in there initially, we can put it in later, but I think that it helps if you just get it right out of the way from the get-go. So from here, going to chain seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then skipping six chains, and going into the seventh with a single crochet. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, into that seventh chain, going in with a single crochet. And again, you wanna go underneath both of those loops of the V. So single crochet, and then chain four, one, two, three, four, skipping three chains, one, two, and three, into that fourth chain, single crochet, so we have a, a big loop and a little loop. We need three little loops in total, and then we go back to the big loops, so chain four, one, two, three, four, skipping three chains, and you want to go slow with this, one, two, three, into that fourth chain, single crochet. You want to go slow with this because this is the foundation for the rest of the entire project, and you want to get it right. So we need one more little loop, so chain four, one, two, three, four, skipping three chains, one, two, and three, into that fourth chain, single crochet. So we've got a big loop, and then we have three little loops. Now we need another big loop, so that's going to be a chaining of seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, skip six chains, one, two, three, four, five, six, into that seventh chain, one, two, three, four, five, six, yes, into the seventh chain, single crochet, there we are, oh, I didn't get in there, my bad, be kind of hard to see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, here we go. I'm going to get it this time. There we are. Okay, into that seventh chain. Single crochet. So we got our big loop again. All right. Now, the reason why I'm doing such a small circumference is because um, I feel that it will still accomplish what we need to you know, present. So chain four, one, two, three, four, skipping three chains, one, two, three, into that fourth chain. Come on. Single crochet. Okay, chain four. 
skip three chains into that fourth chain, single crochet. And we need one more. One, two, three, four. Skip three chains. One, two, three, into that fourth chain. Single crochet. Okay, so we have our, our big loop. One, two, three smaller loops. Back to the big loops. So chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Skipping six chains. One, two, three, four, five, six. Into that seventh chain, single crochet. Now, like I said, this is the hardest part of the entire piece. So if you can get beyond this, you're good. Okay, so we got our big loop. Now we need three small loops in the remainder of our chain here. So chain four, one, two, three, four. Skipping three chains, one, two, and three into that fourth chain. Single crochet. Chain four again, one, two, three, four. Skipping three chains, one, two, and three into that fourth chain. Single crochet. Here we go. And we are just about at the end. Now, if you notice, okay, this is actually our initial initial chain here, and it is on the top as opposed to on the bottom. That's because we put the twist in it, because if you put it the other way, this would be the right side up. Well, it's inclined to go upside down because we put the twist in it. That is what we want. We want it to be upside down. So from here, going to chain four, one, two, three, four. And what I have found works best, let me get this tail out of the way here. Going to go in, in between these two bars here with a single crochet. Like so and then slip stitch into the chain seven space. There, so we have one full circuit, if you will, with our chain spaces. All right, so that is the end of round one. All right, round two, this is where things get interesting. Okay, so we're going to be working along our initial uh, chain, the upside down of our chain. Uh, so start off by chaining up three, and we finished round one by slip stitching into this chain seven space. So chain up three, one, two, three. That's going to count as our first double crochet. We need a total of nine more double crochets in this space here. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, and that should be 10. So again, 
This chain three counts as our first. So we've got two, four, six, eight, 10 double crochets. Perfect. And then from here into this chain space, single crochet going directly from the double into the chain space with a single crochet. Chain four. Single crochet into the next chain space. Chain four. Single crochet into the next chain space. And then we have another large chain seven space. So 10 double crochets into that space. So that's one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and this should be 10. I always, always try to be in the habit of double counting because there's nothing more frustrating than thinking you got it, you go all the way around and yet you miscounted. So I like to err on the side of caution. So I've got five and I have 10, perfect. All right, so pull out a bit more yarn already. Goes so fast. Okay, so from our last double crochet, going into the next chain space with a single crochet. There we go. Chain four. Single crochet into the next chain space. Chain four. single crochet into the next chain space. And we have reached another of our chain seven spaces. So again, that is 10 double crochets. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and this should be 10. Okay, so we've got our five and five. Good, okay. And we are almost where we started. Almost. So from here, single crochet into the next chain space. Chain four. Single crochet into the next chain space. Chain four. Okay, now this is where things get a little weird uh, because where we started, this, this is upside down, but that's exactly what we want. That indicates the twist. Okay, so I just did my chain four, need to do a single crochet into this next chain space. It's like, don't, don't let this distract you down here. You know, ignore the man behind the curtain. All right, so going from here into this chain space with a single crochet, and then we're gonna do the other half of our initial center uh, coming right up. So let's keep at it. 
Okay, so we just did our single crochet. Now, again, like I said, we're going to be doing the second half of our center here. So going directly from here into that chain seven space with 10 double crochets. So going right in. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Again, uh, also you want to be careful not to mistake this chain because we did our single crochet up here this is not our first double crochet you want to be careful of that so i've got my five and my five same rules apply when doing the normal you know normal virus stitch okay so going directly from here into the chain space with a single crochet lock it down, chain four, one, two, three, four, single crochet into the next chain space. Okay. And you're going to need to adjust your Mobius as you go because yes, it is twisted. So from here, chain four, one, two, three, four, single crochet into the next chain four space. Okay. Then going directly into this chain seven space with our 10 doubles. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So we've got our five again. Make sure that you don't mistake this chain as your first double. So I've got the five. And I've got the five, and I feel alive. All right, so from here, single crochet into the next chain four space. Chain four. Single crochet into the next chain four space. Chain four. One, two, three, four. Single crochet into the next chain four space. And we have ourselves another chain seven space. So 10 doubles into there. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, and this should be ten. Okay, grab some more yarn. It's what we do. Yes, we do. Okay, and double count because that's also what we do. So we have ourselves five and five. Perfect. Okay. Moving right along, foot loose and fancy free. We are almost at the end or the beginning, as the case may be. So from here, single crochet into the chain space. Chain four. Single crochet into the next chain space, chain four, 
single crochet into the next chain space. And we have come full circle in a rather twisted circuitous route. So after doing your single crochet in the chain four space, slip stitch to the top of that third chain of our first double crochet right in there underneath both loops of the V, slip stitch. And there you go. And that is the end of round two. Now, give you an idea of how this is actually working. So we started here, okay, and we ended here. Now, if I sort of untwist my work as we keep going so that that edge that was at the top remains at the top. It's like, oh, wouldn't you know, it's at the bottom now. <laughs> Love it. Um, and then continuing on, see right now this is getting a little bit twisted here, but so it was at the bottom just before, right there our slip stitch right there, going around and around and around and around, around and around and around and around. And it is now at the top again. And that is all about the twist. Now, another way of looking at it is, okay, so we have the sort of the, the back of the piece, okay. And in front, we have our twist right here. So that's what, you know, that's what would be, you know, in the front, so to speak. You know, we want it flat in the back, twisted in the front. That's at least how I like to wear it. So that being said, that is the end of round two. We shall continue. All righty. All right, round three, I would like to think is a lot easier now that we have ourselves somewhat established. So from here, we are going to chain up three. And that is going to act as our first double crochet. And then we're just going to go across and double crochet in a, you know, double crochet in each double crochet across for these 10. So we already have the one. And two. And three. And four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight, nine, and ten. Okay. And again, right here, you might think, oh, that's another double crochet. No, that's actually our single crochet. So do not be deceived. Do not be, you know, confused into thinking that that is a double crochet. No, that's a single. So going directly from our double crochet up here, I'm going to go into this chain space with a single crochet, lock that down into place, chain four, and single crochet into the next chain four space, and then going into these double crochets with double crochets. So again, this is a single crochet we're going to go into here, this one right here. Not this chain, no, into this stitch here with our first double crochet and nine more for a total of ten. So I've got the one, two, three, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 more yarn single crochet into the next chain four space chain four single crochet into the next chain four space Straighten out your piece as needs be. You know, it is it is twisted, you know, so you have to keep adjusting it. So 10 double crochets, one in each of these. So again, skipping over this single crochet, going into the first double with a double. So it's one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay. Straighten our work a little bit. And as you can see, this is where we first started here, and we're almost full circle halfway. Okay, from here, single crochet into the next chain four space. Chain four. Single crochet into the next chain four space. And okay, so now we're going to be doing the second half of our loop. So from here, going into each double with a double. So it's one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Single crochet into the next chain four space. chain four, single crochet into the next chain four space, straighten out your work, 10 double crochets, one in each, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay. Single crochet into the next chain space, chain four. Single crochet into the next chain space. And then double crochet into each of the next 10 doubles. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and 10. Very good. Okay. We're getting there. All right. From here, going to untwist things a little bit more. Okay. Single crochet into the next chain space. Chain four. single crochet into the next chain space. And we have come full circle. That's where we first started. So from this single crochet, we're going to slip stitch into the top third chain of our first double crochet. Slip stitch into there. And there you have it. That is the end of round three and it's looking lovely already and it's just going to get easier and easier from here on out so let us proceed on to round four all right so round four i'm going to start by chaining up four because we need a double crochet and a chain one space so one two three, four, double crochet into the next double. So right now we have two double crochets separated by a chain one space, and that's how we're going to work across our doubles. So chain one, double into the next stitch, chain one, double in the next, chain one, double in the next, and so on and so forth until we have 10 doubles separated by chain one spaces. It's really straightforward, which I love. I do. And you know what? Also, it does not hurt to double count your doubles even at this stage because yes i've made mistakes myself see again we're going to skip that one because that's not actually a double that's a a chain where we single crocheted into so we've got two four six eight ten perfect okay from here you have two options as far as i'm concerned you can either go directly from this double crochet into the double crochet on the other side, or you could give a chain one. Lately, I've been taken to doing a chain one, and we're gonna work our way across to the next double. So skipping this chain space here and this single here, going into that next double right there, that first one with a double. Okay, so we're scooting right across, creating a bridge. Chain one, double in the next. Chain one, double in the next, and so forth until we have 10 doubles separated by chain one spaces. Now, I think it was in my first virus shawl tutorial where I did not do a chain one and I had gotten a bit of criticism for that, but I say to each their own, you know, and since then, yeah, I, I kind of like the chain one in between our groupings. But I mean, the difference that one little chain makes, it's not that much, really. 
but I like it. So we've got two, four, six, eight, ten. Perfect. Okay. Chain one. Scoot our work just a little bit. So skipping this chain space and that single crochet going into that double crochet with a double. So that's one and two, three and four, five, six, seven. Eight. And of course I get a knot. There we go. I think this is nine. And this should be ten. Okay. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Perfect. Okay. Moving right along. These Mobiuses are funky do. Okay, now, as you can see, that is where we started. And right now we're going to be on the opposite side. So from here, chain one, skipping this chain space, going into that first double with a Double, chain one, and work our way across. You see? Chain one and double, chain one and double. And it does not hurt to double check to make sure that you don't, you didn't accidentally add multiple chains in between your doubles. I've done it myself or accidentally skipped a double and then you have a, a, a wrong count with your doubles. I've done that myself. All right. So two, four, six, eight, ten. Perfect. Okay. Do to do, do. Chain one. Skipping the chain space, going into that first double. Chain one and double across. See, now, now, like I said before, the, the first chain, I would say, really is the, no, the first round, it's the most fiddly, the most difficult, but once you get yourself established after, you know, a, a round or two, you know, it's really, really not that bad in the grand scheme of things. Okay, so pulling out some more yarn. There we go. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Bingo. All right. Chain one, skipping the chain space, going to that first double with a double, chain one, double in the next, chain one, 
double in the next, chain one, double in the next, and so forth. And we are almost there. And almost finished with round four. Okay, I think one more. Okay, so that is, I believe, the last one. So two, four, six, eight, ten. Perfect. Okay, now that we have come officially full circle, because that's where we first started. So from here, chain one, and then slip stitch into the third chain from the bottom. You don't want to go adjacent to this double. You want to leave that chain space. So there you go. Ta -da! And that is the end of round four. We have come a long way today. And so as you can see, like my previous example, one of those, it had that chain. Well, yeah, no chain. Absolutely lovely. Mm -mm -mm. And it's got this really cool and fun twist in it. And there you go. Alrighty, my dears. So that is going to conclude the first part of this tutorial, because in the second part, I would like to do a repeat, a full repeat or two to really get you familiar with how you can continue on and making this piece as big as you want it. So listen, I really hope that you're enjoying this so far. And if you are, please give a little thumbs up button down below because you know that I appreciate your appreciation. Mm -hmm. Yep. And stay tuned in general because I do try to post often, whether it's crocheting or knitting or audiobook narrations or cooking or origami. It never ends. And of course, my other YouTube channel, Fiber Spider Games, where I do video game playthrough and commentary. Would love to see you there. And you know what to do until next time, right? I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, stay stitching, and please stay safe. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you in my next video. Bye for now, everybody, and have a great day.